there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a safety ruler. Well, some of you may be wondering exactly what the heck is a safety ruler. Well, let me tell you, one of the most dangerous tools in the shop, and I've had stitches because of them, would be the box cutter. And guys, there are times in the shop when, and we've all done this, when we need to cut something, whether it be paper or cardboard or whatever, and we need a straight edge. So what's the first thing we do? Well, we grab a hold of a framing square or a steel ruler of some kind and we hold it just like I'm demonstrating here and we cut the paper with the box cutter. Inevitably, at some point in time, if you do this enough, that knife is going to ride up on the edge of that ruler and cut across your thumb, your fingers, or whatever. And if you're lucky, you'll get away with a scratch. But in a lot of cases, it ends up with a trip to the ER to get a few stitches put in those pretty little pinkies of yours. So what do we do to avoid that? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you uh, today on the show. And it all starts off with some scrap three quarter inch plywood and a little bit of layout over at the bench. Well, I have my scrap of three quarter inch plywood here and it measures three inches wide and six inches long. The very first thing that we want to do is I want to draw a baseline along here and that will measure five eighths of an inch up from the bottom edge. Our next layout lines will be on our edges here. And what I want to do is I want to place a layout line on each edge at one inch in. While we have it in this configuration, I'm also going to draw a center line. And then we can switch our piece around and at from the top down on the center line we just want to place a mark at one inch down from the top. Well I'm going to take another scrap of plywood here and somewhere on it, it doesn't matter where, I just need to draw a line. That will represent our center line of our um, original piece for our layout. Just like that. So we will align those lines. And what I want to do is I want to take a compass. I'm going to set it for a five inch radius and I will draw a radius at the top of our piece and at that one inch mark that we place below the top line. And the last step that I want to do here is I want to soften this corner, this corner, this one, and this one. So for that, I'm just going to use an inch and a quarter circle template and just soften those edges. Well, at this point, we have a few holes to drill, and they will be in the bottom of our piece here. So, half an inch in from either edge, and dead in the middle, centered on our piece of plywood, we need a 3 8 diameter Forstner bit hole, so a flat bottom hole, and we will drill it, one, two, three, at five sixty-fourths of an inch deep. And I think as well, after looking at this, I'd like to round off these bottom corners right here. So I'll take the circle template. I think I'm just going to use a one inch circle template for these ones, and we will round off 
these two bottom corners. Now, once we get this done, that is it. That is all of our layout completed. So I now want to drill a blade entry hole in this center waist area right here. We're going to install a number seven reverse tooth blade in the scroll saw, and we're gonna cut out the perimeter here and this interior piece right here. this point we will now route with a quarter inch round over bit all of the outside edges on both sides of our piece as well as the inside of our inside cut on both sides of the piece. And at this point you can remove all your pencil lines and give the thing a good sanding all over. Well, at this point, you should have something that looks like this. And the last step in this process is we're going to mix up a little bit of two-part epoxy here, just some five-minute epoxy. And the reason for this is in each one of those holes that we drilled in the bottom of our project, in each one of those holes, we are going to glue in a 3 8 diameter rare earth magnet. And once you get all three glued in, just let them completely cure and set up. And once all the epoxy is glue, you should be left with something that looks like that. And this is actually, believe it or not, our finished product. But what do you do with it? Well, let's say that you need to cut something off of this cardstock. Now, normally, as I said in the intro, I explain the dangers of doing it like this, where you hold your stock down and then you follow through with your knife because it is inevitable that at some point in time that knife is going to ride up on top of that ruler and cut into your pinkies. But now you've got this. So what does this do? Well it turns every ruler into a safety ruler. So now as you're holding your ruler down you can cut off your cardstock to your heart's content and your fingers were nowhere near the blade. Now, <laughs> if you should slip off here, where's the knife going? It sure isn't going into your hands. It's gonna hit here first. So this can go a long way to saving your fingers from injury. But you don't need a thick ruler like this. What if you only have a little small ruler like this? Doesn't matter. It's still going to work. It's going to work 100% and you can just do your cutting without any worries of cutting yourself with the blade. So any metal ruler, any metal straight edge, if you want that extra protection, use your straight edge. Because that then gives you another quarter inch thickness here for your blade where it probably won't jump up. But you can just hold it, put your blade in place, and then cut away. And like I said, at no point were my fingers in danger. So there you go, a safety ruler. And there you have it, a safety ruler, or in this case, a handle to make a safety ruler. Guys, some of the projects might be simple and it might be easy to make, but some of those are the best projects. And what we have created here is an opportunity for us to not have to visit the ER <laughs> to get stitches after using a box cutter or having it slip. All of us need to use them in the shop at some point in time and these things are brutal. They are so sharp and it doesn't take much 
and they cut so quick and so deep that it's almost inevitable that every cut with one of these is a cut that requires stitches. So why not take 20 minutes, half hour in your shop and make yourself one of these things so that you're not slipping and sliding and having that knife cross over your thumb as you're holding down the ruler. Guys, it doesn't take much. It took a three inch by six inch piece of scrap, scrap plywood and as well, a few rare earth magnets. Now, you don't have to use plywood. If you want to fancy this thing up and make it all purdy, then go ahead. It doesn't have to be as industrial as I have made it here. But, of course, make it. That's all that matters, is that you make it. You make something like this, or make something, anything, it doesn't even have to be this project, but make some device to keep your hands away from the blade when you're using a box cutter. Make one. Guys, this project's been a lot of fun. It's been on my list of things to do for quite some time. Um, I used to have a ruler years ago that actually had a handle like this built right in. But of course, well, you know what? It disappeared over the years. I don't know where it went. Now, you don't have to use magnets if you don't want. If you have an old bar of steel or something that you use to cut and it's thick enough that you can drill it and screw it into the bottom or even epoxy the handle onto it, by all means, do it. If you want to make a permanent safety ruler, there's nothing wrong with that. So just go ahead and, and do that if that's the project that suits you. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I really want to thank you for stopping by the channel and taking the time to view today's program. I honestly hope that you've enjoyed it, but more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesday.